Welcome back to the lectures on drone systems and control. Uh, this is a continuation uh, of the lecture on transfer function. We have uh, gone through the lecture on introduction of control systems, then we have seen the one important mathematical tool called Laplace transform which transforms a function in time domain into frequency domain or S domain right. Now when we have Laplace transform and when we are able to simulate it in MATLAB, then we have uh, gone to the lecture for transfer function. Uh, once we have seen what is transfer function, uh, it is clear now uh, to all the students that uh, transfer function is a particular kind of system representation, right. When we show it in time domain, it becomes a differential equation which uh, can be used mathematically uh, to represent a system. If we want to see the system in S domain, then the particular representation is called transfer function, right. So, what is a transfer function? It is a Laplace domain or S domain representation expresses the system as a ratio of output to input in the Laplace domain, fine. And uh, it is important that um, to understand that transfer function is valid for linear time invariant systems. We have gone through these lectures, it is just a brief uh, recap. Um, so, this is a particular form of transfer function. What is this? This part is the a polynomial equation, this is another polynomial, when we have differential equation uh, and we do Laplace transform, what we get is an algebraic equation, right. Now when after doing the Laplace transform, we find out the ratio of output to input in the Laplace domain like this y s by u s, what we get is a ratio of two different polynomials, right. This is very important because uh, we have to uh, understand that this transfer function has a numerator part since it is a ratio and we have one denominator part. This is very important in this particular lecture because when we go for MATLAB implementation of transfer function which is required in different scenarios of uh, drone systems and control when we have to specify about the system uh, we have to write it in terms of Laplace transform and uh, if you want to write it in terms of Laplace transform then you have to use uh, some specific commands available in MATLAB and then put it in a specified format so that it becomes understandable, okay. Uh, so I will just uh, go through a basic um, recap of this particular uh, chapter. So it is a mathematical representation as I have told relationship between input and output which is a kind of um, exclusive way to represent a system. How? If we have a system GS and if we give some specified input RT, how it is behaving can be figured out from the output, okay. So, uh, this is the mathematical expression, uh, Ys is the Laplace transform of the output Yt and Rs is the Laplace transform of input RT, okay, fine. Yt is used, uh, systems must be linear and uh, uh, time invariant is the key assumption, initial conditions must be 0, transfer function is a frequency domain representation or sometimes it is called S domain, right. Uh, it converts differential equations into algebraic equations that is why when we uh, have this G S equal to Y S by R S, sometimes it is written as Y S by U S also, this R S also mentioned as U S. Uh, so, um, uh, we get ratio of two polynomials. So, it enables analysis of system behavior in terms of poles and zeros. Uh, we have seen in the previous lecture and we will see the idea of poles and zeros, how they behave in the next lecture as well. Uh, then uh, it is useful for designing and analyzing control systems, right, okay. So, uh, we had one example of first order system where this was the differential equation. We have seen that when we take a Laplace transform in both left hand side and right hand side, we get this equation which is one algebraic equation, right. Now when we take the ratio of the Laplace transform of output and Laplace transform of input, then we get this particular uh, 
representation of the system. Okay. Now, I will take one example, we uh, will explain it, then I will go to MATLAB and show that how transfer function is uh, mm, the problem of transfer functions are solved in MATLAB. Okay. Just assume that we have a system. Okay. What is the system? It is written as in terms of transfer function of 2 s square plus 3 s plus 4. What can we tell about the system? We can tell that this system is a second order system, right? Fine. Okay. So, if we uh, represent it in uh, this particular system in a differential equation, then we will see it is a second order differential equation. When it comes to transfer function, this s square terms tell us that it is a second order differential equation, right. Okay. Now, when we uh, want to represent this particular system mathematically, we write it this way. But when we want to write in uh, this particular system in MATLAB, we have to write it in terms of numerator and denominator. Right. So, just assume uh, that we uh, represent the numerator as n or you can write n time numerator, this is a variable. Right. So, what is the numerator here? The numerator is 1. What is the denominator? This is the denominator, but when we write it in MATLAB, we will just write the coefficients. What is that? The first coefficient is 2, comma, the second coefficient is 3, comma, third coefficient is 4, 2 s square plus 3 s plus 4, right. So, we have to write the transfer function uh, in this way that when we have this n and d, then we have to represent the system in MATLAB as sys equal to t f, t f is a MATLAB command and inside that you have to write n comma Okay. Now, when we do it in uh, MATLAB, we will see that how it comes. Okay. Let us write it, um, we will save this particular file as transfer function and we will simulate the transfer functions one by one. Okay. So, we will write n equal to 1. Okay. Then we will write d equal to what it was 2 comma 3 comma 4. Okay. How we represent the system in terms of n and d? We write it as system equal to t f n comma d. Okay, and we run the code. You see, it comes as a system which we have written here, right? 1 by 2s square plus 3s plus 4. Okay, 1 by 2s square plus 3s plus 4. Now, in this way, we can uh, simulate or we can represent lots of different systems uh, like for this we do not have a 0 in the transfer function, but if we write like this 1, 2, then you see what happens, how it changes. Initially, it was a second order system with 2 poles of course and only 1 uh, or no 0, no 0 at all. Now, when we do it as 1, 2, you see how the system changes. Now, we have uh, 1, 0 in the system and we have 2 poles as it was. Okay. If we make any sign uh, minus, then the pole or 0 will get shifted to the right hand plane. And if uh, 0 or pole goes into right hand plane, then what is the problem? Then uh, the system can tend to instability and we have to be careful about the system. Only 0 going into the right hand side uh, does not make the system unstable all the time if we are careful about designing the gain of the system. But if the pole is on the right hand side, then the system will be unstable. 
and we have to uh, design uh, specific controllers so that it comes to uh, the the system response come uh, behaves as a stable system okay we'll uh, see some other transfer function examples okay and then uh, accordingly we'll go into uh, checking that how the responses will be when we have some specified set of uh, uh, inputs to the system okay so in the next uh, lecture on transient analysis you will see that uh, when this kind of transfer functions are there say let us make it 1 okay you will see that from this transfer function itself we can uh, predict a lots of behavior of the system that how it will work in terms of impulse response in terms of step response and so on what will be the error what will be the performance what will be the system specification everything can be seen from that okay fine now i'll go to another system and i will um, just try to show you that how uh, with transfer function we get a uh, uh, with this command transfer function we get a, a representation of the system and then if we go for um, say step input then how the system will behave okay say this is uh, the system with uh, transfer function uh, of a, um, like taking n numerator and d denominator and we want to see that how a step response will work for the system or how the system will behave for uh, when it is influenced by or exerted uh, to a step response. Okay. Yeah. You see it here. We have this particular system. If we want, don't want to see the system again and again, then we can just comment it by just putting the semicolon and this is the system itself with its step response okay uh, in the next lecture it will become clear to you that how these values 1 3 4 and so actually works uh, for um, uh, works differently to uh, plan the step response if this is not our desired step response then we can change the system uh, by uh, just changing this uh, coefficients okay for example if we make this particular coefficient as 1 then let's see how it looks like so now you see the response changes right okay if we make it say even smaller 0 0.5 then you see again the system response changes so, uh, you will be exposed to the topics like natural frequency, damped frequency, damping factor, then uh, there will be some uh, terms like um, maximum or peak overshoot, rise time, settling time and so on. Those are the important performance metrics of a system uh, and uh, all these are very basic features of second order system. Okay. So, when we get these all these kind of uh, coefficients changed we will get different kind of uh, step response okay when we make this 0 0.5 uh, we change it to 5 you see there will be another different kind of step response mm -hmm. so you will be exposed uh, to the terms like maximum peak or maximum or peak overshoot when it is 0 0.5 we were getting a peak overshoot of this particular height so what is peak overshoot from uh, ideally uh, the it is a step response so the system should settle down to a magnitude of 1 but here what is happening is that it is overshooting the magnitude 1 and going higher so this particular portion is called overshoot and what is the peak overshoot it is this particular value what is there at the tip okay now when point from point 0.5 we make it to 1 
you see that this peak value will be now getting changed okay if we make it 2 you see it is again diminished you make it 3 changed right and finally we have shown for 5 so you see there is no overshoot at all the step response for this particular system is coming and then after uh, say 5 seconds or so it is becoming 1. So, uh, at what point it is getting settled to the actual or desired value uh, gives us the notion of settling time and that will also be covered in the next lecture. I am just giving a notion so that you can uh, appreciate the next lecture in a better way and uh, from the beginning you can be alert to note that what are the performance metrics how those are defined and how it is taking uh, proper shape okay so what we cover in this particular lecture we see uh, as we have gone through transfer function in the previous lecture uh, this lectures motivation is to see that how this transfer function is simulated uh, in matlab so we check that uh, we should uh, specify a transfer function in terms of numerator and denominator. What is the numerator? It is a polynomial. Similarly, denominator is also a polynomial. Now, in the polynomial, we have the coefficients. When we have to specify the system in MATLAB, we have to extract those coefficients, right? So, you see for a system like this, we have to extract the coefficients from the transfer function and we have to write in the form of numerator and denominator right and then we specify the system as uh, transfer function using this n as numerator and this d as denominator and when we simulate then we see the transfer function is uh, expressed in this way in matrox matlab okay so it is a continuous time transfer function okay now uh, we have seen after that we have seen that if this particular system which is a second order system if that is exposed to uh, step input then how the responses change when these coefficients are changed okay so with that um, uh, today i will end this lecture in the next lecture we will go through transient analysis of a system second order system uh, and also um, we will briefly touch first order system uh, and we will see um, how with different uh, popular inputs like uh, step input, ramp input or sinusoidal input and so uh, how the basic behavior or response of the system changes. We will come back to the MATLAB implementation and uh, checking uh, the step response performance of the system uh, after the next lecture. Okay? Thank you.